springtime about seven years ago, Erin Orcutt was loving her life as a new mom. You enjoyed being a young mother. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a great privilege to be able to be a mother. When she wasn't busy with her son, she was busy working. Erin was a cocktail waitress at a restaurant in Ontario, California. At the time, I would spend my weeks with, with my son, and on the weekends, I would be at work pretty much from Thursday night to Sunday afternoon. But one Saturday in April, business was slow. Erin suddenly had an afternoon to herself when she left work early. You get off in the middle of the day, you're excited about having the rest of your evening, you're not thinking bad things are gonna happen to you. But something really bad was about to happen. When I got to my car, I had a habit of clicking my unlock button twice because it unlocks all the doors. Just as Erin opened her door, she heard, Get in the car. At first, she thought it was just a coworker pulling a prank. When did you start realizing that this is serious? When I saw the gun. This was no joke. The stranger had a gun pointed directly at Erin. She knew hollering for help wouldn't do any good. It's very rare for the parking lot to be empty. Unfortunately for me, it, it was empty. And if someone did pass, they likely would not see the gun. He held it very low to his waist, and he had a friend behind him who was kind of blocking from the aisle direction. He had an accomplice. Erin mm -hmm. worried if she tried to make a run for it, he'd shoot. Instead, she followed his commands. I got in the car, he got in the passenger seat, and told me to drive. The accomplice stayed behind, and now Aaron and her abductor were alone, leaving the mall parking lot on a ride to hell. He didn't tell me where to drive, and since I grew up in the area, I knew of a few places where cops tended to hang out. So I figured I would try to steer that direction. I contemplated driving my car off the road, or ramming into somebody else, or just putting it in park and running. Aaron was also begging the strange man to let her go. I pleaded with him, just, you know, you can take my car. I'm not worried about it. I won't call the cops. Just take my car and, and let me out. When he told her to pull over, Aaron drove into a restaurant lot where she'd always seen cops hanging out. Hopefully somebody's there and maybe that'll scare him. The fact that there's a cop right there. Unfortunately for me, there was no cop there. The gunman ordered her to drive around to the back of the building, but she couldn't. There was a storage unit attached to it. He couldn't get back there without a code. He was very upset. He kept going, drive around at the back, and I said, there is no back. Surveillance video obtained exclusively by Crime Watch Daily shows Aaron and her abductor pulling into the parking lot. I'm parked facing a window into a storage facility, and there's, a, you know, not a there was a gas station down the street, there's a Denny's behind me, there's a liquor store right there. I thought, there's no way, there's no way anything's gonna happen. But Erin was wrong. As soon as she parked, the gunman forced her at gunpoint into the back seat. I started crying, he got in the back seat with me um, and kind of sat where my car seat was. He was sitting on top of your baby seat. Mm-hmm. Aaron says he then ordered her to take off her clothes. She desperately pleaded with him to let her go. He made it clear that wasn't going to happen. This nightmare was far from over. He ended up putting the gun to my head and told me to stop crying. He actually um, racked the gun and a bullet popped out and landed in the seat. I knew the gun was fully loaded. You knew he meant business. Up next, a daring escape. I booked it out running, crying, and screaming. The breathless moment caught on tape, and what the rapist leaves behind leaves cops speechless. What did you think when you saw that? I was shocked. He had me but he was taking pictures the entire time, and I looked up, and he smiled, and he snapped again, and then he told me to uh, smile pretty and took a picture of me without my clothes on.